Welcome back to the Curious Kid Cast, where we answer the questions that make your brain itch in the best possible way. I'm your host, Andy, and today we're tackling a question that came all the way from a brilliant listener named Sophie in Manchester, England. Sophie wrote to us because she was helping her dad make his famous spaghetti bolognese when something rather dramatic happened. She started chopping an onion, and within seconds, she was crying like she'd just been told her favorite TV show was canceled forever. Her dad thought it was hilarious. Sophie thought it was extremely suspicious. So she asked us, why on earth do onions make us cry? Brilliant question, Sophie. And I have to say, I've been there. Just last week, I was making onion soup and I looked like I'd been watching sad puppy videos for three hours straight. My neighbor popped round, saw my tear-stained face and asked if I was okay. I had to explain, no, no, I'm fine. I'm just being attacked by a vegetable. She backed away slowly. But here's the thing. There's actually some seriously cool science happening when you chop an onion. We're talking chemistry, biology, and a vegetable that's basically a tiny underground ninja. So grab your safety goggles, metaphorical ones probably, and let's dive in. Let's think about what an onion actually is. It's not just sitting there in your kitchen being innocent and round. Oh no, that onion has been living underground, minding its own business, and has developed a rather clever defense system. You see, onions can't run away from danger. They can't grow teeth or learn karate or call for backup. They're stuck in the ground. So they came up with something much sneakier. Chemical warfare. Inside every onion are these tiny little storage compartments, like microscopic cupboards, filled with special chemicals. While the onion's intact, everything's fine. The chemicals are kept separate, like ingredients that shouldn't be mixed until you're ready to bake. But the moment you cut, slice, or chop that onion, bam. Those compartments burst open and the chemicals mix together. It's like accidentally combining the red wire and the blue wire in a spy movie. Things are about to get dramatic. Here's what happens, step by step. First, you cut the onion. Your knife slices through thousands of tiny onion cells, bursting them open like tiny water balloons. Second, two substances that have been kept apart suddenly meet. One's called alienase, which is an enzyme, basically a protein that speeds things up and the other is something called sulfenic acid. Third, these two react together and create a gas. Now, this gas has an absolutely bonkers name. Are you ready? It's called synpropanethyl soxide. Try saying that three times fast. Actually, try saying it once. I'll wait. Let's just call it the onion gas because I value my tongue and its ability to pronounce normal words. This gas is invisible. It's light, and it floats right up from your chopping board into the air heading straight for your eyeballs like a tiny, irritating missile. Now, your eyes are absolutely brilliant at their job. They can see colors, shapes, movements, and they can help you spot when someone's sneaking up behind you with a water balloon. But they're also really, really sensitive. They have to be, because they're exposed to the outside world all day long. To protect themselves, your eyes are covered in a thin layer of water. Tears. That keeps them clean and stops dust and germs from getting in. It's like having tiny windscreen wipers running all the time. But when the onion gas reaches your eyes, it dissolves in that tear film and forms a mild acid. Now, before you panic, it's a very weak acid. Not the kind that melts through metal in cartoons. But your body doesn't know that. Your eyes send an urgent message to your brain saying, Red alert. We've been compromised. Deploy emergency tears immediately. And your tear glands, which are like tiny factories sitting just above each eyeball, go into overdrive. They start pumping out extra tears to wash away the irritating gas. That's why you end up looking like you're sobbing over a vegetable. Which, let's be honest, is a pretty undignified way to spend an evening. I once had to explain to my nephew why I was crying in the kitchen, and he said, Uncle Andy, are you sad because the onion had dreams? I didn't have the heart to tell him it was just chemistry? For hundreds of years, people knew onions made them cry, but they had no idea why. Some people thought the smell was cursed. 
Others believed onions released poisonous fumes. A few people probably blamed witchcraft, because back in the old days, people blamed witchcraft for pretty much everything. My onion made me cry? Must be a witch. My toast burned? Definitely witches. It wasn't until the 20th century that scientists finally figured out the real culprit using microscopes and chemistry equipment. They discovered that tricky enzyme and the gas it produces. Fun fact, the gas is actually a sulfur compound, which is a chemical element that also makes garlic smell so strong and gives volcanoes that lovely rotten egg smell. So basically, when you're crying over onions, you're experiencing a tiny kitchen-sized volcano. You're welcome for that mental image. But here's the good news. Scientists and chefs have figured out some absolutely brilliant ways to stop the tears. Let me share my favorites and the science behind why they work. First up, chill your onion, pop it in the fridge for about 30 minutes before you chop it. Why does this work? Well, cold temperatures slow down chemical reactions. It's like putting the onion's defenses in slow motion. Less gas escapes, which means fewer tears. I keep a couple of onions in my fridge just in case of cooking emergencies. My friend once opened my fridge and said, why do you have onions next to your orange juice? I said, trust me, it's science. She still thinks I'm weird. Second, use a really sharp knife. A dull knife crushes the onion cells instead of cutting them cleanly, which releases way more gas. A sharp knife makes a clean slice through the cells. Fewer broken cells equals fewer tears. It's like the difference between carefully opening a bag of crisps versus just smashing it with your fist. One method is definitely messier than the other. Third, you can chop your onion underwater. Some chefs actually do this in a bowl of water or under a gentle running tap. The water dissolves the gas before it can reach your eyes. Although, I have to say, chopping anything with a sharp knife while it's underwater feels a bit like you're doing kitchen surgery. It works, but you do look slightly ridiculous. Fourth, turn on a fan or your cooker hood if you have one. The moving air blows the gas away from your face before it can attack your eyeballs. The gas just wafts off into the distance, probably to bother someone else. Sorry, neighbors. And fifth, my personal favorite. Wear goggles, yes. Swimming goggles, yes. In your kitchen, yes. You'll look like you're about to go scuba diving in a pot of soup. But do you know what? They work brilliantly. They form a tight seal around your eyes and keep all the gas out. Plus, if anyone laughs at you, you can say you're doing science, which you are. Science doesn't always look cool, but it gets results. Now, let's talk about some absolutely wild onion facts that you probably never knew and can use to impress people at dinner parties or, you know, at school lunch. Onions have been around for at least 5,000 years. Ancient Egyptians thought onions were magical and even buried them with mummies as a symbol of eternal life. Which raises the question, when the mummy woke up in the afterlife, did they think, oh, brilliant, someone packed me an onion? History doesn't tell us. Ancient Greek athletes used to eat onions before competitions because they thought it made them stronger and faster. Spoiler alert, it didn't, but they probably did smell quite powerful. Imagine the ancient Olympics, with everyone reeking of onions. The discus throw must have been particularly fragrant. Not all onions make you cry. Some varieties like Vidalia and Maui onions are much sweeter and milder. They contain less of that tear-making enzyme, so you can chop them without looking like you're watching a sad movie. Where were these onions all my life? Scientists in Japan actually created a no-tears onion. They used special breeding techniques to stop the enzyme from forming the gas. They called it the smiley onion, which is possibly the cutest name for a vegetable ever. I want a whole kitchen full of smiley onions. Here's something else that's interesting. Not everyone cries the same amount when they chop onions. You might have noticed this. Some people can slice through a whole onion like they're robots with no feelings. Others start crying before they've even picked up the knife. What's going on there? Well, it turns out everyone's eyes are a bit different. Some people have more sensitive tear ducts, so their eyes react faster. Others might just be standing in a better spot in the kitchen where there's more airflow, and different types of onions release different amounts of gas. Red and white onions tend to be the tear jerkers, while sweet onions are much gentler. So if someone teases you for crying, you can tell them it's because you have superior onion-detecting abilities. You're basically a vegetable superhero. Scientists absolutely love studying onions because they're a simple way to understand plant chemistry. Some researchers are even looking at ways to use onion enzymes to create safer, natural chemicals for farming or medicine. Meanwhile, plant breeders are working on even more tearless onions. One day, crying over onions might be something we only read about in history books. Future kids will say, wait, you mean vegetables used to attack people's eyes? That's mental.
Before we wrap up, I think it's time for a little quiz. Let's see if you've been paying attention. I'm going to ask you three questions, and I'll give you five seconds to think about each one. Ready? Question one. What's the name of the enzyme in onions that starts the chemical reaction when you cut them? Is it A, alanase, B, lactose, or C, photosynthesis? The answer is A, alanase. Well done if you got that. Bonus points if you can actually pronounce it properly. Question two. Ancient Egyptians buried onions with mummies because they believed onions symbolized what? Was it A, good luck, B, eternal life, or C, really good soup? The answer is B, eternal life. Although honestly, I think really good soup would have been a solid choice too. Question three. What's the nickname for the special onion that scientists created that doesn't make you cry? Is it A, the happy onion, B, the smiley onion, or C, the friendly onion? The answer is B, the smiley onion. I mean, it's adorable. I want to give it a hug. So, there you have it, curious listeners. The next time you're in the kitchen and you start crying over an onion, don't be embarrassed. Be amazed. You're witnessing real chemistry happening right in front of you. That little onion has spent thousands of years evolving a brilliant defense system, and every tear you shed is proof that nature is absolutely full of surprises. And remember, if anyone laughs at you for crying, just smile and say, I'm not crying. I'm doing science. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode of the Curious Kid Cast. A massive thank you to Sophie in Manchester for sending in such a brilliant question. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends and subscribe so you never miss another curious adventure. And if you have a question you'd like us to answer, maybe about why the sky is blue, or why do we hiccup, or why does chocolate taste so good, head over to our website at CuriousKidCast.com and send it our way. We read every single one. Until next time, stay curious, keep asking questions, and remember, the world is way more interesting when you wonder about it.